Steels. Hey guys, it's Leon Steel Raven Farms. Um, just wanted to talk to you guys today about um, leaving your legacy behind, right? Um, a lot of us, I would say a vast majority of us don't have um, the legacy that we want to hand down to our kids, right? Um, you know, I, I struggle because, you know, the legacy that I want is not the legacy that I got. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, right? You know, I, I'm very blessed that I don't have the legacy of abuse and drugs and, you know, breaking cycles of addiction. But at the same time, um, you know, I did not learn how to <laughs> clean a house. I didn't learn how to um, cook a meal. I didn't learn how to, you know, do really any of the things that I felt were, and I still feel are really important for every child to learn. You know, um, that legacy of the handed down cast iron is, is for the most part gone. You know, yeah, you get, you get the, you know, the, the odd ball every now and then where, uh, you know, grandma's, you know, cast iron gets handed down to, to mom and mom's like, well, I'm not going to use it. I have, you know, $400 Teflon pans. I don't want that. And so it gets handed down to the, the son or the daughter, whoever. And they're like, well, I don't want it. Uh, you know, I want, I want $400 Tesla on pants. And so it ends up in a yard sale. It ends up in an estate sale. It ends up, you know, circulating. And that cast iron was handed down for generations is 200 years old. It's gone, you know? And so as much as I want to rail against the fact that, you know, I don't have a legacy, that, or I, let me back that up. I don't have a legacy that I want. Um, the reality is, is that we have squandered the legacy that we could have had, right? Where, you know, great grandma lived, you know, on five acres and she took care of, and this is my personal one, right? Like my grandmother, um, my family, most of, well, my mom's side of the family is from Ohio, right? And so they grew up very close with the Amish. They, um, you know, my grandmother would visit her grandmother's house and <clears throat> they had chickens and, you know, she, she'd have to go get the eggs in the morning. She hated it because they would, you know, they'd peck her and she was afraid of the, the, the chickens. And so her and her brother would go over there and they would help in the farm and they would help with the gardens and they'd help with this and they'd help with that. And when, and I don't, and I, and I don't know, right. Because I, I never met my great, great grandmother. Um, there, there was no gardens or so, you know, excuse me, there, there were gardens. And from what my, my mom has told me about uh, my great grandmother, um, my grandmother's mother, um, there were gardens and, you know, you would, you know, pick out of the garden and go have tomatoes and salt until, you know, you were stuffed, right? That was, that was the thing. That was the cool thing about going to grandma's house and times changed. Right. And I know that I understand, I understand that times changed, but my grandmother did not teach me how to cook. She did not teach me how to can. She did not teach me how to garden. She didn't teach me any of this stuff, right? Um, she did not teach my mom this stuff, right? And there's a, there's a decent probability that my grandmother was not taught this stuff. And, or she, she was exposed to it, but because she didn't show interest or for whatever reason, um, she did not have the training and she did not pass on the training, um, again, for whatever reason. And this is not a, a podcast where I'm blaming, you know, oh, I, you know, 
I don't get to know things because, you know, no, 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 that, that's, that's not my point. Because if you had told me in my teens and, you know, my childhood that I would be living this life, I would have laughed at you, you know, because, yo, man. <sighs> If you can't figure it out, I am driving. And this is how I do my podcast because I don't have enough time or quiet at my house to uh, do a podcast effectively. So I do that when I drive. And unfortunately you get to hear when people cross the center line and you know decide that they want my lane too. Um, so anyways, um, like I said, if, you know, if you told me in my childhood that this would be the life that I'm living, that I would want to be a stay at home mom, that I would want to be, uh, cooking from scratch and, you know, all of these things, I would have friggin' laughed at you. You've lost your damn mind. You know, I, I was raised by a single mom, right? Very, very independent. I am very independent. Um, I'm very stubborn. I get exactly what I want. And if I don't get what I want, I work even harder to get what I want, right? Like I don't let things stop me. And um, not that you can't be that way, but usually the people who have the mindset and the mentality that I have, which is you bust your ass to get the things that you want. Um, those are your your boss babes, right? Those are your, your bad bitches or whatever they want to call themselves at this particular time. That's who they are. And so they're trying to climb the corporate ladder or the, you know, uh, the sales ladder. They're doing all the things to make all of the money. And to be honest with you, I, I, I don't, I don't want that. I mean, don't, don't get twisted. I want the money, <laughs> you know, who would say no to the money, but for me, I would rather be in the garden. I would rather be in the kitchen. I would rather be playing with my goats or milking my goats or whatever. Like I would much rather be doing that than be stuck. And this is me in a, in business attire or dresses and wear makeup and have my hair done and my nails done and all, and all of the things that, um, nauseates me. Okay. Uh, I, that's just not who I am. And so, um, <clears throat> if you had told me 20 years ago when I was 14, 15, 16, whatever, um, if you had told me 20 years ago that I would be living on a homestead and raising chickens and ducks and goats and, you know, these huge gardens and all of that, I would have been like, Oh, cool. I don't think I want that. And so the, the issue is, is that my generation, my mom's generation, and even my grandmother's generation to a certain extent, didn't want the life that the great grands and the great, great grands and that our ancestors um, had, they didn't want it because they were fed this lie of move to the city and work a nine to five. That's what they were fed. Your life will be so much better if you leave the farm and countless marketing schemes where, you know, Oh, you don't need to, you know, waste your time growing fruits and vegetables. You can just go to the store. And that became the legacy, right? Um, like, I, I, I'm not putting down my mom. I want that completely understood because there's no way to say this where it's not like, you know, oh, you know, her mom was a piece of crap. No, my mom was great. But I vividly remember growing up and every single thing that we ate for dinner came out of a package a box, a can, etc. Everything came in a, from the grocery store, right? I don't remember any time that we got fresh fruits and vegetables 
meat, butter, you know, dairy, whatever, from anywhere but the local, you know, Kroger, or Publix, or whatever, like whatever it was. <coughs> and I look at at that, you know, I remember the pots and the pans and the and all of the things, and I remember being like, okay, well, this is how you cook, right? This is this is this is how you cook. And turning around and being like, you know, when I got to be an adult, and you know, because Jared and I got married a week after I graduated high school, um, much to my family's uh, displeasure, they were not thrilled about it. But you know, I was an adult. What could they do? And um, not because of Jared, but because you know, you're talking about an 18 and 19 year old kid getting married. Uh, what are you doing? You know? Um, so when I started, poor Jared, like that poor man, he, whew, he had to eat some stuff. Uh, the night of seven cheeses is the one that sticks out. Um, I had no idea how to, uh, make a meal really. Um, and I was like, okay, we're going to make, uh, seven cheeses or three cheese rice cerrone and we're gonna make uh the what is it it used to be i don't know what it is now but it's like a condensed soup that's like cheesy um and we're gonna bake chicken with that on it and then there's something else that was all cheese right it was literally the night of seven cheeses and he was a champ and he ate it but he makes like to this day 20 years later he makes fun of me because he's like you remember the night of seven cheeses yeah good shit for a week you know like and but he had to go with me on this journey of learning how to cook and it's not that he couldn't cook but like i'm fairly old-fashioned fairly but i'm also modern right like i i straddle the line between the worlds because um i believe that you you know everybody everybody should know how to cook and because everybody should know how to cook, it is not a gender role. However, because I enjoy cooking, it is it is what I do the most, you know. Um, but anyways, so Jared had to cook a lot, or he had to eat a lot of my cooking. And most of it was not burnt. You know, I never, you know, set off smoke detectors. Uh, well, I mean, I'm sure I did, but like... I didn't burn dinner to the point where it was inedible uh, because I wouldn't eat it. That was, you know, I don't, I don't eat burnt food. I can't do it. I can't. If it's a texture thing, it's a smell thing. I can't. Um, so raw dinner, you know, was more likely than a burnt dinner. Um, and, you know, I remember, God, it was about 10 years ago now. Holy crap. Uh, we were living in Texas. We had just bought our house and I got into this you know, I want my kid, I want my kids to be healthier. I want, I want to be healthier myself. So I stopped buying, um, certain foods, started taking the steps to be healthier. Right. And I'm sitting there going down this path and Jared's like, okay, like whatever. And I started canning and I started doing all this stuff and it felt right. And I just remember thinking this knowledge that I learned from the internet is what was passed down for years. And we just threw it away. We threw away all this knowledge. So now we have this resurgence of people who are scared who are frustrated, um, maybe a little angry, and they are running to the hills. You know, whether they're buying property outside of suburbia like we did, whether they are, um, you know, learning as much as they can before they buy that property, or, you know, they're just saying to hell with it, and they're going ahead and they're putting a garden in and, you know, putting the middle finger up to the HOA. Like, you know, there's a lot of different people that are just saying, no, this is not 
right. And you're having, I would, I would say probably about 30% of the population that is racing back to their roots. Right. And they are racing towards a legacy that previous generations thumb their nose at, not because they thought that they were better. I don't, I don't think, I think it was marketing. I think it was the time that said, you know, the, the 50s, 60s and 70s that, you know, you don't need to spend hours in the kitchen or hours in the garden. Look at what this can do, you know, and all those skills are gone, you know, and people heavily rely on people like me and other bloggers or YouTubers or, you know, podcasters or whatever. They rely heavily on us to bring it back. And I am so grateful for that mantle and that responsibility. I am so thankful that I get to be one of the people that bring those skills back. Now, I have a lot of how to's on my, um, on my blog, right? I have a lot of how to's on how to build your, you know, how to, how to build your legacy. Um, how to brew chickens indoors, how to do this, how to do that. But really, I, for me, the most important part that I try to get into every single blog post is not necessarily the how to do something, because you can Google and figure out how to you know, cook a frozen chicken, right? You can Google that. You don't need me to tell you how to do it. Um, what I try to infuse in every single blog post that I do is not how to do something, but the encouragement to do it. Remember, there's no judgment here. There's none. Like, you know, if you were to come tell me, you know, I want to, I want to raise ducks instead of chickens, no judgment. I want to raise pigs instead of goats, no judgment. There, there are very few things and I'm not going to tell you what they are. I feel like they're pretty self-explanatory. Um, I do not hate for something that you cannot control that we don't do that. That's not how the world should work. It's how it works, but that's not how it should work. We do not judge. You want to have purple hair tattoos and have a garden, go right the fuck ahead. You want to, you know, like, I don't, like, I don't even know because I, like, I don't, when I tell you guys that I don't judge, I don't judge mainly because I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. You want to have purple hair and, you know, tattoos in a garden? Go right ahead. I don't care. I will help you. I don't care about your personal appearance. I don't care about your personal uh, philosophical debates and all of the things. I don't care about that. What I care about is your garden and how happy your garden makes you. That's what I care about. What I care about <clears throat> is, do you need help in your garden? Is there something that I can help you with? That is what I care about. And that is the legacy that I am leaving behind. Because my kids don't judge. My kids don't hate. They look for places that they can help. They look for places that they can encourage. And you know, when you're having a bad day, my kids look for ways to help you feel better. Whether that is being the person that sits next to them, you know, sits, sits next to you and, you know, talks to you about what you, what, what do you need? What can I help you with? And, and, you know, kind of talks you through your bad day or your rough spot, or they just sit there and be with you in the silence. That's my kids. That's what my kids are being taught because this world is hard. And I am not going to leave a legacy behind where my kids are at it. You know, they add to the problem. I'm not doing it. I will not do it. And so building your legacy is not necessarily uh, all hand-me-down cast iron. Um, Sometimes your legacy is being the person or raising the people or both 
that makes everything quote right again. You know, and I think, I think that eventually we'll get this world straightened back out. Um, when people stop allowing division, when people stop allowing, um, you know, the, the higher powers, if you will, um, to, to rule the working class. Um, when more people have said, when they say I've had enough, that's when we'll have true change. And that's the legacy that I'm hoping a lot of people build. I know it's what I'm working on. And I got two little boys that march to the beat of their own drum. They, for the most part, do what's right. I'm working on it. I'm working on it, guys. Like, you know, bear with me. It's very hard raising, you know, a preteen and a teenager. Um, but I'm working on it. And there will be hand-me-down cast iron. You know, there will be hand-me-down recipes. They will learn how to can. They will learn how to garden. They already know how to butcher chickens. Um, they'll learn. And what they do with those skills is not the point. But I am building my legacy.